Hello everyone, my name is Jessica and I'm honored to kick off this Cindy Dennis Ministries miniseries. And the book for this miniseries is Why Can't We Just Get Along? written by Shelley Hendricks. And one of the underlying themes that I took away from this book is that God created relationships so that we can grow and learn about his love. It's not really about our desires or outcomes or abilities. It's truly about living a Christ-centered life and letting his love shine through us. Now, I know you're probably asking, but what if the other person is just too difficult to get along with? Or, but I've tried countless times and I'm just tired of trying. Trust me, been there. <laughs> uh, if either of those of your are, are some of your thoughts, then let me remind you of Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 22. The Bible says, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother who has sins against me? Seven times? And Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 70 times seven. So yes, forgiveness is absolutely key. And the thing that I really appreciate about Shelley's book is that she identified six biblical principles to really help us with some of those difficult relationships. And she also intertwined some of her own personal experiences as well. And there were some anecdotes that, you know, I really couldn't relate to, but it seems as though she's experienced some very catty and harsh friendships <laughs> with other women. So spoiler alert. Someone actually fed her something that she couldn't eat and she ended up getting really sick from it. And trust me, that would never cross my mind. And as a matter of fact, there's a lady in our women's group who is allergic to nuts. And so for Valentine's Day, I reached out and I researched and I found um, a nut-free chocolate factory so that you know she wasn't left out of our celebration. But even though I couldn't relate to some of those uh, experiences that Shelly had experienced, that doesn't absolve me from ever having difficult relationships in my life. But enough about me, back to the book. So uh, you're probably curious as to what some of those six principles are. Well, let me go over them rather quickly. So based on Romans chapter 12, uh, Shelley derived six of these key principles in dealing with difficult people and diff difficult relationships. And so the first principle is to offer yourself as a living sacrifice, accept and appreciate the differences you see in others, live out of who God says you are, choose your friends wisely, number five, choose forgiveness, and number six, become a dispenser of grace. So for principle one, offer yourself as a living sacrifice. I love how Shelley reminds us of Martha and Mary, and, and if you're not familiar with uh, Jesus' experience at Martha's house, go ahead and flip to Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Again, that's Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42, and you can read all about it. But uh, Martha actually asked Jesus if he cared about her, and his response was of love and true concern. He told her that she mattered more than her service. Now, I know many of you have uh, probably been fed up with something or someone because you worked really hard, but just didn't receive that affirmation that you were looking for. Well, this story in Luke reminds us that love and devotion to God should never be compromised, not even for our good deeds. Okay, so what does that mean as believers and, and how does this tie into relationships? Well, I think we must first have a loving and honest relationship with our Heavenly Father. And then when we do this, we can be genuine and love ourselves, which then translate to allowing us to love, allow us to love others. But, you know, when we are intentional with God's word, it will transform us from the inside out. So in the book, Shelley posed a pretty deep question. She said, why do we allow broken and imperfect people to define us by their opinions, actions, and words? Hmm. Pretty deep, huh? Reflect on that one for a bit. Why do we allow broken, imperfect people to define us by their opinions, actions, and words? Well, one of the beautiful things that I love about the Bible is that God brought together people who were, in fact, imperfect. So if you think about um, the church, right, the body of Christ, our purpose is to demonstrate genuine love and grace. So moving on to, to principle two here. Accept and appreciate the differences you see in others is really about mindfulness. And mindfulness has become a pretty popular term over the past like 
five years or so. But in the book, Shelley tells us that we need to be mindful of how we treat other people. If not, we can find ourselves being you know, a critic, you know, that person who judges uh, every little trivial thing, or maybe you might be a cynic, that person who is full of bitterness and always sees the worst in every situation, or maybe a competitor who has the sole purpose of, you know, one-upping the other person at every turn. But instead, she tells us that we should be a cheerleader, you know, that person who has your back and, and is always in your corner, and, and hopefully you have one of those um, that's a cheerleader in your life. Principle three, live out of who God says you are is really about loving people from the center of who you are. So Romans 12 uh, verses six through eight tells us about these gifts that God has given us. And it says in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things. So if God has given you, you know, the ability to prophecy, speak out as much of faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If, you, uh, if your gifts is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if your gift uh, is for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. So principle four, choose your friends wisely it means really opening up yourself to the possibilities that God has, in, what God has in store for you, rather than clinging to your own agenda and, you know, your idea of what your friends should look like. And as I was going through those principles, some of you were probably thinking number five, choose forgiveness is the hardest one. Well, a novelist once said, not forgiving a person is like drinking rat poison and then waiting for the rat to die. Think about that. So if you are not forgiven, excuse me, if you don't forgive, then inadvertently you may cause yourself more harm than the other person, right? So forgiveness is not saying the other person who wronged you is right. It's just freeing. Forgiveness frees you. And so that's something that uh, we should not take lightly. Okay, and then the last principle is number six, become a dispenser of grace. So Shelley shared um, an acrostic for grace, G-R-A-C-E. And if you don't remember learning about acrostics in elementary school, it's okay. It's one of those poems where the first letter, um, it, it, the first letter of each line spells out a word or a message. So here, let me share with you Shelley's. It says, God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. So unlike those loyalty points from Chick-fil-A or Tropical Smoothie, grace isn't isn't earned, right? It's 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 unmerited and it's already been given to us. So keep that in mind. Um, I really enjoyed Shelley Hendricks' book, Why Can't We Just Get Along? And I challenge you to think of someone in your life, you know, past or present, whose words still really resonate with you or their actions still affect you in some way. Now, attempt to use Shelley's principles as you discover and enjoy God's peace. And when you know who you are and whose you are, trust me, it's a freeing place to be. So I thank you for your time and for letting me share some key takeaways from the book. I really hope you enjoy this message. Uh, stay safe and love you. God bless. Bye.